Hi guys, in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to build a login page for your Android app. We are going to be creating a retro for a client and making a call to a REST API uh, which authenticates the user and returns a success message. I've already built the REST API to work with basic authentication and a MySQL database. If you aren't sure on how to set up the backend you can check out some of my other videos. So I'm just going to show you the database here. As you can see, we have a user called Bob and his email address is bob at gmail.com. So his information is here and I'm just going to show you what a request will actually look like. So I'm just going to type in his email address first and then his password. I'll just hit show password here so you can see it. And I'm just going to hit send. So we should get a success message. Now I'm just going to change the password here to show you that you get an error if it's wrong. And there you go. So let's just jump straight into it here guys. I'm just going to create a new Android project and we'll just call this uh, login tutorial and hit finish. And the first thing that we're going to do is come to our build.gradle file for the app and we're going to add retrofit. So we're just going to say implementation and then in quotes we're just going to say com.squareup.retrofit and it's retrofit 2 actually and we're going to say colon retrofit and we're going to use version 2.6.0 and we're going to do the same here for our json so we're going to say converter json and we're just going to sync the project then and once that's complete we can create our next activity which is going to be the retrofit client instance so we're going to be able to use this class uh, to get an instance of our retrofit object from anywhere else in the code. So we're going to just create a private uh, static string here for the base URL of our API. And this will depend on what the URL of your API is as well. But when you're using the emulator in Android, you should set your IP as 10.0.2.2 and the port number is 8080 in this case. So I'm just going to fill in the rest of my details about my API URL and then the next thing I'm going to do is create a retrofit object I'm just going to call it retrofit and then I need to create a JSON object and we'll just call that JSON. After that we're going to create a method which is going to be called get retrofit instance and it's going to check first if our retrofit object is null and if it is null we can instantiate our JSON object so to do that we're just going to say JSON is equal to new JSON builder and then we just need to set the lenient and say dot create after that we can instantiate our retrofit object so we're going to say is equal to new retrofit dot builder and we need to pass in our URL here after that we're going to add a converter factory which is going to be our JSON factory so to do that we need to pass in our JSON object and the last thing that we're going to do is say dot build. After that we can just return our retrofit object. The next thing that we need to do is create an interface. Um, we'll just call this interface API. So we're going to use this class to define the request which we'll be sending to our REST API and we have to mention what type of request it is so it's a post request and we also need to write the URL which points to our endpoint. After that we can create our call and that returns a string and we also need to pass in the header which is our authorization token. Now I'm just going to import this class that we need here and I'm just going to show you what the method looks like on the back end. So you can see it's called check login and it takes in an authorization header and it returns a string so these should match up. So let's just jump to our layout files here and we're going to create our main activity page and this is going to be the login page. So I'm just going to drag some text views and some edit text onto the page here and I'm going to center everything horizontally. We also need a button for logging in so let's just drop that in and once again we're going to center that. I'm just going to put some constraints in as well here so that everything loads out perfectly. And that's pretty much all we need for our login page guys. So once we have that done, we can move back to our main activity. And inside here, we're just going to set up all our user interface stuff guys. 
So I'm going to create a button for the login and I'm going to create our edit text for the email and for the password. So once I have that done, I'm going to create a string for both the email and password, which we're going to get from the user input. And I'm going to come down here and just set everything up by finding it by its ID. So I'll set up the button first. I'm just going to copy and paste this here for everything else. So we'll say email text and password text. After that, I'm just going to set my onclick listener for our button. And inside the onclick, we are going to get the authorization token. And we're going to actually create a method to do that for us. But we need to pass in the email address and password here to create our authorization token. So let's get the email from the input from the user. And we'll do the same for the password. And once we have that, we can pass these as parameters to our create authorization token method. So let's go ahead and create this method here, guys. In this method, we just want to format our authorization token uh, to have the email address and password separated by a colon. After that, we need to add the word basic and one whitespace character to the combined string. This is because we're using basic authentication. Then we need to base64 encode our string and that's why we're using the bytes array here at the start. So then we can just return this string and we're going to create another method here called check login details. And this is where we're going to make our call to our API. So let's just create this method here. And the first thing that we're going to do is get our retrofit instance. So let's create a retrofit object and equal that to retrofit client instance. I'm going to say it's our get retrofit instance. Then we need to say final interface API and we'll just call this API and we're going to equal that to retrofit.create and then we're going to pass in the interface API dot class. After that, we're going to create our API call and that returns a string. Uh, so we can equal that to API.checkLogin, which is the name of the method we defined, and we're just going to pass that our authorization token to. So then we can use the .nq method, so we can say call.nq, and if you just hit enter, guys, it'll auto-generate this code for you here. Now, so we're just going to deal with the on failure first, so we're just going to log this if the request fails. And in the onResponse method, the first thing I'm going to do is check if the response was successful. And if it wasn't, I'm just going to comment here that we're going to handle the error. So you can just catch that error and print it out if you want. So in here, I'm just going to say if response dot body uh, dot matches success. And success is the string that we get back if the login details were correct. Uh, else, we're going to say we're just going to make a toast here and we're going to say that it was invalid credentials. So that means the login was incorrect and wasn't found in the database. And if it was successful, we're just going to print out a toast here as well saying that it was a successful login. So what you could do here is whatever you get in the request back from the API, you could put that into the shared preferences. And if you're not too sure on how to use shared preferences, you can check out my other video where I go into the detail on that. And then you'd go to the next intent and handle uh, your session from there. The next thing to do is come to our manifest file and I'm just going to make sure that our app has permissions to use the internet. So you can say uses permission and we're just going to hit in internet here. After that we can just build the app and I'll show you what it looks like when it's running. Just a quick error that I found here guys in our retrofit client instant class we just forgot to put a forward slash into our URL so if you don't mind doing that as well. Now I'm just going to show you a quick example of what it should look like. So in the email, I'm going to type in bob at gmail.com and the password is bob. And I'm just going to hit log in here now. So as you can see, I got a success message. And if I change the password now, we should get an error. There you go. So this seems to be working fine, guys. And that's it for the tutorial guys, so if you enjoyed that, make sure you just like the video and leave any comments or anything like that down below. Thanks for watching.